Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Hey, guys, I'm Marco Grazzini, and you're listening to The Primatech Files. Hey, Primatech peeps. Welcome back to the Primatech Files, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things Heroes Prime and Heroes Reborn related things. I am Lilith and on the hunt for special enhanced humans and twins now is... It's me, Ricky. Hello. And we have another special treat for you in our long line of series of interviews. This week, we're talking to Marco Grazzini, a.k.a. Oscar Elvindegor 1.0. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Ricky. Hey, Lilith. Hey, Thanks for uh, having the peeps. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Would you please uh, tell our audience a little bit about you? Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to say hello. My, my name's Marco Grazzini. I play Oscar Guterres slash Elvindegor 1.0 on Heroes Reborn. I'm an actor based in Toronto, Canada, where they shot most of uh, the series. I've been in this business for 10 years, transitioning from initially from modeling to commercial acting and onto TV and film. Uh, I've, even, I've, I've even spent a little time doing some cartoons and video games, which is actually pretty damn fun. Mm. Uh, other interests in no particular order, cooking, photography, basketball, soccer, yoga, and uh, more of a fan of TV than film. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I was reading your bio earlier, and um, I saw that you did, um, was it Toon world tour i believe it's called yeah, it's, uh, total drama total that's drama, it yeah and uh, cartoon network yeah and uh Clee bennett was a, a voice on that as well uh, yeah he was uh he was chef that, that guy's a multi-talented dude man <laughs> definitely yeah, yeah this guy, i mean he's got he's got the voice to do it he's definitely he's, he's, anything. he's just had to uh <laughs> done you got the job right <laughs> that voice is, is that yeah. his real voice it's not put on no Oh, no, that is his real voice. Nice. He just has a crazy presence and uh, a talented actor as well. Obviously, that's important. Yeah. I mean, that that voice will, you know, that voice will uh, will do wonders for yeah. sure. Um, another thing I found out whilst re- uh, having a look at you, uh, that sounded really weird. Uh, another another thing I, I, I realized. Hold on, I got to call the police because I got to <laughs> uh, Another thing I, I, I realized in our research is that uh, you are half Filipino. Filipino yes, represent. <laughs> yes, indeed. I didn't know you were half Filipino too, sir. Are you half or full? Full, sir. Full. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're all over the place. It's hilarious. We're uh, yeah. taking over the world, uh, one half at a time. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, my mom is, and I. Uh, that's actually where I started my career uh, just over ten years ago. Mm. I was uh, modeling and doing some uh, TV commercials over there. Yeah. Yeah. Were you um were you on one of the numerous dance shows that they used to have? No, I was <laughs> never a backup dancer for any type of variety show in the Philippines. So I don't care how hard you look, that evidence does not exist. We're gonna look anyway. I feel no. like it's a <laughs> but I do that. I remember dancing to Usher, yeah, on some Sunday morning variety <laughs> show. Nice. I'm not a good dancer, FYI. You're never gonna see me on like when, uh, you know, like uh, Ryan did, um, what was it, Step Up? I can't remember yeah. the name. No, I, I don't. I don't got. I don't have Ryan's uh, Ryan's dance moves. So <laughs> no, I, I need a double for that for sure. Yeah, cut to the close up of the legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll start off with. Um, did you uh, watch the original Heroes series? You know what? I started. Um, I got, as I said, I got into acting around two thousand five. Yeah, and uh, Heroes was actually one of the first series that I binge watched like crazy. Um, I think I, I chimed in around end of season one or beginning of season two. Mm. And uh, that along with lost was one of the first series that I got really addicted to. And didn't matter if I was, 
you know, there in hour six or hour seven of viewing, I, it really spoke to me. And I was a, I was a huge fan of, of the original Heroes. Um, having the opportunity to, to audition for the next um, iteration of the show was uh, crazy for me. And, and then to, to actually, you know, book it was, uh, was unimaginable. It was, it was really cool. It was very secretive, apparently, the, the audition process. Did you know that you were auditioning for Heroes beforehand? Or um, It's a weird question, I know. but <laughs> I, I did know that I was auditioning for Heroes, um, although the parameters of the audition were fairly secretive. I mean, the, the sides themselves, so like the, the audition material, what the actor prepares for the audition, what I had to prepare was audition sides. Like It wasn't even the script from like let's say the the pilot of mm. um of the series so i think it was i think it was something like me and and my son and he had gotten into trouble at school um so i it was sort of you know mirroring um what happens in that first scene with oscar and jose yeah jose had uh, defaced the uh the um the side of the wall there at the mm. auto shop but I actually had no clue that I was auditioning for uh, an Evo yeah. for, uh, for El Vengador. So, I mean, I, I just thought I was auditioning for Oscar Gutierrez. Mm. And I didn't find out about El Vengador until I had booked the role and I was reading the script. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, I, I'll never forget that moment. I, I knew that he was potentially an Evo, but I had no mm. clue wh to, to what extent it meant yeah. anything about El Vengador. So I remember I was actually um, reading the script for the first time uh, with my girlfriend, and um, we had gotten to that part with, uh, with Oscar and, um, and Carlos, yeah. um, where it's the reveal mm. of who El Vengador is actually, actually is, because you're led to believe the whole time that it's Carlos, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I remember just reading, reading scripts, scripts, scripts. Oh my god! It's me! <laughs> yeah, so that That's was what we cool. did too. So. Yeah. <laughs> Harking back to the original series, um, which character did you kind of relate to most, and and why? Um, I mean, I didn't relate to anybody. I, I didn't like find myself in anybody, but I I was very uh, enthralled with a couple characters, mainly. Uh, Hero and Siler were probably the, the two most memorable ones to me. Hero because he, you know, he just had this universal likability, yeah. uh, just this this innocence, this joy about him, um, which was so captivating to to watch. And then on the other side, Siler, you know, being the the villain, but he was he was charming. Yeah. He had this intensity to him, and he had this sense of humor to him. Mm. And um, you know. Being able to make a villain likable is is a, is a definite skill. So kudos to uh, to Zach uh, Quinto for that. Another Sarmi member. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you always been a fan of the kind of superhero genre? I mean, I had I remember having like a a picture of me in a in a, sp a Superman costume, or a Superman pajama actually. Nice. Was four or five years old, and I remember making. My mom do the uh, forcing my mom to do the uh, the curl on his hair because I wanted <laughs> that haircut, you know, the hairstyle that Superman had. Mm. But um, I wasn't the typical young boy or teenager who was a fan of you know X Men, Batman, Spider Man. That I, I mean, I watched the movies once they started coming out, um, but I was never an aficionado or, or one who was you know down with the yeah. extreme mythology of of all of these franchises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did they give you in terms of like your when auditioning? Did they give you any kind of background to the character or anything to kind of um, to sink your teeth into, or was it just as soon as you booked the part? Well, again, I, I never, I didn't know about the whole uh, superhero aspect. Yeah, yeah. Prior to that, um, I was attracted to just the dynamic between uh, father and son. I, I don't have any kids. I think. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> not, uh, yeah, I don't have any kids, I think. But just that dynamic um, 
was was uh, was uh, attractive to me. Uh, a, a young man sort of grow, growing into growing growing older, and then me, you know, having to to guide him along in, in life, and also the dynamic between uh, between you know older brother and younger brother. I mean, once I found out about El Vengador that you know that that dynamic of having this duality to play mm. was uh, was extremely extremely enticing. So yeah. Okay, it's it's burning a hole in my throat. I have to ask this question. What was it like to wear the suit? Because that suit looks like a contraption, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, the the suit. I mean, first of all, looking at it now uh, on TV is it's it's just crazy to you know to. Mm. To to see myself and, and and to to remember like oh my god I I did, I did this right because I mean when you you know when when you go from the the fittings actually I had I had seven fittings for 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 that costume oh, <laughs> yeah the the mask had different iterations it was probably about six or seven different masks from leather to uh, patterned <laughs> leather to to silicone um, I had to do a whole uh, like a uh, What's it called? That plaster uh, mold of my yeah. face. So the only part that was um, not covered were my uh, just two air holes by my nostrils. Mm. And, uh, I had a little bit of a panic attack by minute twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> Once that thing started, hard, you know, hardening uh, on my whole face and on my chest as well. Uh, the first layer is like a seaweed, you know. So it's like this cool sort of like gelatin sort of consistency, and I was like, oh, cool. This is kind of like being at the spa. But once they started putting on the plaster, that started getting a little uh, panicky. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, the the, the mask uh, was uh, was awesome in the end because there was a, a lot of movement to it, um, as opposed to the leather initially, which is like a traditional uh, leather or, or, or um, um, like a synthetic, which would be a traditional luch- luchador uh, mask. Mm-hmm. Um, the suit was heavy. That that armadillo armor that they got, yeah, uh, El Zangador is is pretty damn uh, heavy, and uh, uh, underneath that is like a, a leather, you know, sort of uh, base layer, and um, so it definitely wasn't easy to move around in that. Mm. Um, it kept me wa- it kept me warm in the winter months because we shot uh, some of it in in like uh, yeah. the end of winter in Canada, yeah, but we also shot in, in the middle of summer. And uh, that was a pretty sight. You know, <laughs> I definitely had some uh, some uh, some heated moments in that costume. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean the 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 most awesome part of that to me was uh, was the championship belt. Yeah. Well, the mask too. Well, everything. But I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Going going back, you know, back to my childhood. Uh, not so much now, but um, yeah, like. Uh, the whole wrestling as- yeah. luchador aspect to me was uh, was pretty cool. That's nice. You had your own championship belt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I tried to steal it, but <laughs> <laughs> so you did your own stunts then? Oh yeah, everything. I, you know, I'm so uh, badass. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what? I wish I had the opportunity to do more, but because of the fact that um, you know he's masked. Like we we cut to sort of uh, as we refer to it uh, in the industry as hero shots. Like when you see my face, it's me, yeah. obviously. But if you don't see my face, it's probably not me. Um, but I would have definitely, you know, enjoyed uh, doing some more of the stunt work. I had done uh, some stunt work on um, another show called Warrior, which was a, a pilot that NBC. Um, uh, was looking at, unfortunately, didn't go through. But I did about two weeks of uh, sword work on that with um, William Lee, who was, uh, oh, nice. was on um, uh, X Men, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. Like, I mean, I have no martial arts, no fighting experience whatsoever, but I was doing two hours a day, and I loved it. Like, it, mm-hmm. it, was, it was really captivating to me. Um, so I definitely would welcome more stunt work, but. You know, um, a lot of times on set, it's a time crunch. And if there's a professional who's been doing it the whole lives, mm. then better them than me, you know, because I'm also clumsy and I'm, I'd probably break myself <laughs> on take number two. <laughs> and I don't want that. Yeah. You, you talked about uh, liking wrestling before. Was it the like 
the American professional wrestling like WWE and w- WCW or was it more the kind of Lucha Libre kind of aspect of it? Uh, I was a huge WWF fan growing up. No. Yes, WWF, I will never yeah. call it. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was definitely a surreal moment, you know, holding that belt in my hands. Mm. Um, I'm going to go on a wrestling rant here, so I hope we have time. I mean, I go back, I go back to the 80s, you know, Macho Man, Hulk yeah. Hogan. Jake the Snake, Undertaker, and, and you know into the two thousands with uh, Rock and uh, Stone Cold Steve Don't Austin. Those guys were, I always say, those guys were my first acting coaches. Mm. And I mean, I even know, but those those guys were really committed. I, I mean, as silly as those storylines yeah. were, you believed it yeah. um, because they they lived it. And uh, also, actually, I did spend some time in Mexico. I was on a university exchange program. And I actually did uh, attend a live Lucha Libre uh, mm. event. The Mexicans take their wrestling very seriously, don't yes. they? <laughs> yeah, old ladies smacking guys with their yeah. handbags, the villains. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. It's it's a wonderful part of uh, of the culture. So very excited to to you know represent that cool. on a stage like Heroes Reborn. You are officially the first character in the Heroes universe to actually wear a costume and fight crime. We've had kind of dealings with it in the in the past, but no one's actually put like a, a fully fledged costume on to go out and fight crime. Um how did that feel to kind of have that, you know, be associated with your character? It was an honor because I mean it, it, it's to be uh, uh you know sort of a, a pioneer yeah. in this transitionary period uh of the franchise from you know, the original series to reborn to who knows where this is eventually going to go. Mm. It was, it was definitely like a, a pinch myself moment as a, as an actor and a, as a fan of the show. Like, I mean, uh, unless you're like a, a top tier, you know, Tom mm. Will Smith, you know, and you, you rarely get the chance to audition for stuff that you love, stuff that you were a fan of mm. um, and stuff and stuff that sort of holds a place in, in your sort of, you know, lexicon of, of uh, you know, past um, past loves as far as uh, film and TV goes. So I always say that it was a, it was a, uh, a definitely a watermark moment for me, mm. you know, in in my life. It's, yeah. it's been such an honor. Did you know about the Heroes Vengeance comic books? Because obviously the first one kind of deals with the history of El Vangador. I had no knowledge of the comic books. I, I think I just found about it on set one day. Mm. Uh, I think Ryan told me, actually, <laughs> you know, they're doing a comic book. I'm like, no, I didn't know. Um, but I did, uh, Tim Kring did film me and Ryan in on uh, our origin story, so to speak, for for uh, for Carlos and, uh, oh, nice. and Oscar. Uh, so that definitely helped, you know, inform some of the choices I made within my preparation. I mean, you know, obviously the more context I have, the better sort of image I can create in my head and, and the fuller my performance will be. So, I mean, I knew about uh, Father Mauricio and, and, and also that, um, you know, w- what place that the, I mean, why, you know, I chose to, to, to yeah. become El Vangador and, and uh, what place he had in our family. So, I mean, hearing about uh, about that was uh, was pretty cool. I, I, uh, I actually just recently got a couple copies uh, sent to me of uh, Heroes Vengeance. Nice. So it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a trip in <laughs> itself, just, you know, being able to leaf through that very carefully, mm. very carefully, because <laughs> I, uh, I did collect comic books as a, uh, as, as a kid. I was, uh, but not, again, not X-Men, Spider-Man. I collected uh, Archie comic books <laughs> and uh, Topolino, which is uh, Italian for Mickey Mouse. So I collected uh, both of those um and Topolino was in Italian that's how I'm, I'm fluent in Italian but I yeah I collected um Archie comic books I kept them in uh the comic uh comic book bags I think they're worthless no no actually I'm like dude you like lucked out because there's like such a revival in Archie comics now so if you still have them because I swear they're still in the comic bags I remember I actually sent uh I entered some contest when I was like seven years old and my name is in one of the Archie oh, comics. Nice. <laughs> signed by Stan Goldberg. Is his name Stan Goldberg? I'm not sure. I don't know. The uh the writer or the uh the 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 um the artist behind the uh the comics. But um yeah, I guess more of the uh more of the uh the innocent nature of the comics that I collected for sure. 
No problem. You you got to act a lot alongside um obviously Jose. Um no, you are Jose, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jose, the, the 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 kid, Lucius Hoyas, right? Um yeah. what was it like uh taking him on un- did you take him under your wing or you know what? I mean you you, you can't look at actors uh, you know, who are, are, are in their teens or, or you know, uh, below any child actors and mm. just presume that they need helping along. Like, I mean, mm. he blew me away. Uh, mm. Lucius is, uh, is, a, is a consummate professional, really fun to play, you know, to, to be around, still a kid mm. at heart. But I mean, these kids that, you know, that are working actors uh, know their stuff. And I mean, um, it's uh, it's it's really awesome. Uh, I think that was actually the second or third time that I've acted opposite of um, of uh, of, a, of a kid, of a child actor, mm. and I'm always just really amazed at, at how how good they. Maybe I suck. No, no, <laughs> how, how good they are, and this, just the joy that they have for it, because. That's something that um, potentially, you know, uh, gets lost as as an actor ages and as they, you know, just become more and more jaded. <laughs> no, just as be- as they, you know, just be- as it becomes more and more a part of their life. Whereas somebody who's in the earlier stages still has that uh, that joy uh, very apparent. Um, so I I really enjoyed working with Lucius. As a, a viewer, like obviously being in it and obviously being a viewer of the the show, um, do you have any theories on what is coming up? Um, these are your personal theories, not anything that you know of. Um, and if you do know it of anything, can you let us know without being patient or caspered? <laughs> I, you know what the the show and its uh, its script, uh, its uh, its script delivery procedure was very secretive. Yeah, so I actually uh, was only privy to three episodes. So I have no clue, yeah. honestly, promise, cross my heart, hope to die. I have no clue Fair what's going to happen. I am especially coming off of the last episode, yes. part one of uh, June 13th. I am very <laughs> curious to see what's going to yeah. happen. And uh, and I had no clue as well with uh, with uh, with uh, the twins, yeah, and with um, with Hero and uh, and Miss uh, Petrelli going back in time. That was very well tied in. And I mean, you look back at that first scene of of uh, uh, of Tommy, yeah. and I mean, he has the uh, the cheerleaders right in front, foreshadowing yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it all makes perfect sense <laughs> now. But I'm uh, very yeah, very curious. Uh, to see how it all evolves. What will I think happen? Yes. Um, He's like, Oscar's not really dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't say any more than that. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's, I mean, obviously we're headed towards, uh, you know, a very um, dramatic uh, confrontation. Yep. I, I think the, the, the stakes are raised very high with uh with Renatus and with everything but i i you know what i it, they've, they've done such a good job of um moving the story along and, and the uh the tension along that um i don't know i mean obviously you know um tommy uh is going to be very central to the story but i, I i'd like to think that you know all of the uh these new heroes that, that we've met mm. are going to um somehow be um interconnected yeah. um and the, there's going to be a con- congruity to the, to the uh to the story and that they're going to um you know help vanquish the bad guys yay yeah <laughs> awesome oh okay just one more thing like when you first came on screen because like i don't usually like uh google actors and stuff like when i'm obsessed with the show like i just like to see how they do but it was driving me crazy because you looked familiar and i'm a huge fan of beauty and the beast and then it hit me i was like detective billings (laughs) oh wow (laughs) yeah (laughs) so way to spot me (laughs) so yeah yeah. shout out for my beasties (laughs) yeah beasties yeah so we want to thank you for joining us, taking the time out of your day to uh, let us interview you. You were so much fun. So yeah, Ricky, now you can do the thing. <laughs> Download the podcast, save the world. Thanks, thank guys. Time. Later, Primatech peeps. <laughs>